Hey everybody, Jim Haas here for Blaze Outdoor Products. Today we are going to rotisserie a five pound chicken on a Blaze gas grill. Uh, we get quite a few calls, customers that usually are a little apprehensive, a little nervous, especially when they're using a rotisserie for the first time. So I'm going to take you through this whole thing from installation, features, warranty, and uh, how to use this thing. Okay, so if you have purchased a Blaze professional style gas grill, it's going to come standard with the rotisserie kit. If you have an LTE or traditional grill, you can order one as an add-on option. What you're going to get in that rotis kit is the motor end bracket, which can be mounted on either side of this firebox cover, rotisserie rod forks, and the rotisserie rod, which also comes with the handle, washer, a counterweight, and the stopper. So you slide your stopper on, counterweight, washer, tighten your handle down onto it. And once everything is lined up, you install it into the motor on one side. Once the stopper is lined up on the firebox cover on the other side, you want to tighten down this key. I'll usually use a pair of pliers just to snug it down ever so gently. Be careful not to over tighten. And there is your rotisserie kit install. Now we're going to do a little bit of grill prep. It's important to know with rotisserie, there are no rules set in stone. Um, a lot of customers are nervous about what exactly should I do. There are no rules set in stone. I'm going to take you through a process that works for me that I use on pretty much everything I rotis, and it works every time. So the first thing I'm going to do for grill prep is I'm going to empty out the whole firebox, taking out the warming rack, the cooking grates, the flame tamers, the heat zone separators, and the burners down to the drip pan baffles, which I'm going to leave down in the bottom of here for now. Uh, what I'll do is I'll have a foil pan full of water and seasoning, maybe some cut up veggies, whatever I happen to have in the kitchen today. Put that in the bottom, the meat spins up above it for, in this case, hour and a half to two hours for a five pound chicken is about the average time. And you start to get that aroma filling up the yard and the neighbors start to come sniffing around and it's it's a beautiful thing. So while we have all the guts of the grill out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let those soak in a bucket of soapy water. This is a good time to do a deep cleaning on the guts of your grill. Um, I preach maintenance and cleaning as often as possible. Um, I usually do a rotisserie about once every six weeks or so. And I find that's the perfect time while I have everything emptied out. Put it in a bucket, let it soak for the duration of the rotisserie and then I could give these things a good scrubbing, put them back in at the end of the day. It's very important to maintain and keep everything clean, to keep the airflow and the ventilation, keep everything working properly. All right, up next, food prep. Now the fun part. When it comes to rotisserie, I find that chicken is usually one of the easier things to get onto the rod. Uh, reason being, it's got a hollow cavity. So put the rod right through the center, forks on each end, tighten them down. Again, I'll use pliers to ever so gently tighten the forks down onto the rod. Um, I use cooking twine to tie up the legs and a couple of pieces around the center of the chicken to keep those wings in nice and tight. Um, now, as far as prepping goes, remember olive oil is your friend. So we're just gonna give this a good coating of olive oil. sides. And as I put the seasoning on here, this will drip down into this foil pan that I have sitting below the chicken. And again, that foil pan will be going in the bottom of the firebox, uh, creating that wonderful aroma that the neighbors will smell from miles away. Uh, so as far as seasoning, again, no rules. Whatever you got in the cabinet. Today I went with garlic powder, lemon and pepper seasoning, and something called Big Papa's Grill Dust. I don't know. Uh, the chicken on its own really doesn't taste a whole lot just on its own. So when it comes to seasoning, 
don't be shy. Now also remember, if you've got seasoning that is high in sodium and salt, you might want to go a little easier on that. You don't want your rotisserie chicken that you've spent now two hours cooking and an hour beforehand prepping to come out completely salty and nobody wants that. So, a little bit of this, kind of give it a good coating. A little bit of garlic powder. And again, just coating the entire chicken. lemon and pepper seasoning. Again, no rules. I do it different every time. People ask me for the recipe, what do you do exactly? <laughs> there is no exactly. So that'll probably be pretty good. Now we'll take these same seasonings and just dump a bunch down in this foil pan down here that I put some water in. And that's will really get that nice aroma going in the yard as this is spinning. Um, I'll take whatever veggies I have on hand that day. And today, all I have is an onion. So we'll just cut it into big chunks. Let that sit in there. There you have it. Meat is prepped and ready to go. Okay, while our chicken is soaking in those seasonings, now is a good time to preheat the grill. Uh, as I said before, rotisserie, there are no rules set in stone. When I use my rotisserie, I like to use the rear burner and just the rear burner on its own. A lot of people out there like to use the two side main burners on low, or I've even seen where people use all the main burners in conjunction with the rear burner. Um, I find that just the rear burner works just fine for me. Do what works for you. Again, nothing set in stone. Uh, keep in mind this rear burner is a little further down the line, so when you go to light it, you may have to hold in that gas knob for maybe seven to ten seconds, get that gas down the line, give it a slow and deliberate turn and click, and there we go. Took three times that time, not uncommon at all, especially today it's a little breezy out here then it's a little more of a challenge. A lot of customers will call us claiming their rear burner is not lighting. Um, what you're going to see in most cases is the flame jump across, appear to come back, and then appear to go out. It's going to take a few minutes for the uh, ceramic burner to start to blow, but if you hold your hand just a few inches off there, you can feel the heat immediately so you know it's lit. So there's that. Also keep in mind, this is a very direct infrared heat and it is not going to register so much on the analog temp gauges. Um, this is going to show on average about 250 degrees with your rear burner going, but trust me, this is getting up to about 900 to 1000 degrees on average. Um, just remember again, it doesn't register so much on the analog temp gauge. Trust me, it's hot. All right, let's get the chicken on. All right, grill's been preheating for about 15 minutes, which is just fine for rotisserie. I got my foil pan with water and seasoning and that cut up onion down on the bottom. Got the bird on the rotisserie rod on the motor. Get this thing spinning. Um, so, five pound bird, usually about an hour and a half to two hours is what it takes to get to your temp of 165. So what we're gonna do is check the temp in about an hour, kind of give us a feel for where we're at. See you in a bit. All right, so we're about an hour and 10 minutes into this rotisserie. We're gonna check temperature in a few different places just to kind of get an idea of where we are. So 140, 144, 150. All right, so it's not going to be too much longer. We want to get up to 165, and then we pull this off of here. We let it rest under foil for a good 15 minutes. 
Uh, while we have this lid open, I'm going to do a little basting with the seasoning that we have down in this foil pan down below. That's really going to get that aroma going. And uh, we'll check this about 20 minutes or so. But right on track. All right, we have temped out at 165 in several different places on this chicken, so I have pulled the bird off of the rotisserie using my heat resistant gloves. Be very careful, the rod is very hot. We are now going to temp this in foil for 15 to 20 minutes. Let it absorb all those juices and finish cooking, and then uh, we're going to cut it up and have a really fantastic lunch. We'll see you in the kitchen in a few minutes. All right, our bird has been resting for 20 minutes, and now we call this segment the moment of truth. Here we go. Does not look too bad. the chicken. <laughs> Cut off the cooking twine. Slice this sucker up. And we'll call that lunch. All those glorious juices in the bottom of the pan. We'll definitely drizzle those over the chicken. gracefully it's very hot <laughs> but you get the idea so I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit more slice it up and then I'm gonna eat it so there you have it blaze rotisserie remember no rules are set in stone um, during that last half hour while it's spinning uh, baste it every so often and that seasoning down there in the, in the foil pan and uh, Enjoy yourself. Let's come on in tight on this.